Hello everyone, welcome to another week of MMO Concept Art. This is Steve Curtis, we got the gang all here just about. And tonight we will uh, take a look at what everybody's got done. Uh, we didn't have much of an update from Nelson this week. He's got some things going with recording, so we will see about that soon enough. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. Hey. Pretty good, thanks. Wolf is always good. <laughs> I've never known you to not be good, Wolf. I'm going to figure out how you do that someday. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, who else got stuff show tonight? I know Wolf does. I know Richard does not. I have a bunch of, good, of sketches. Yay! That sounds awesome. Nick, we got anything coming from you today? I got one drawing done. Um, it was kind of a busy week. Yeah, I hear you. Alrighty, well, um, I also was very busy, so I was sketching just a little bit right before class, so I apologize for how rough this is, but I was uh, playing around with uh, Nick's idea of kind of a stone tower, and I was trying to think of how I kind of wanted to texture that in, so I was fiddling around on CG textures and came across this little creature and I really I don't know something about that texture spoke to me so I grabbed that and pulled it in and used it on the tower and that was about my 15 minutes of fame but I thought it would look neat uh, if it, once it was polished out as uh, kind of mossy, rocky, very jagged, lots of uh, walkways and areas to move it around. Could be. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of hard to see that now. I just it, ran out it of is. time. <laughs> it definitely is. That's what I get for constantly doing uh, 15, 20 minute artworks instead of actually putting a few hours into them. But... You might want to lower a bit the character you have in front of it. The what? The character. He said lower, you might want to lower the character a bit. I don't know exactly what he means. Uh, to put it um, a little further away, uh, a little bit further away. The character a little further away? Yeah, so back a little. Oh, back put down. Put it down. Back down yeah, around so here. Farther away. Either that or you need to have like shadows between the big tower and the character so you get a sense of scale yeah. between the two. Yeah, I've got a, uh, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. And I don't know how good this comes through for you guys, but I've got, he's kind of standing on an edge there, but, but yeah, I'll play around with it some more, see what I come up with for, uh, basically I looked at the clock, said, well, I'm just going to try and at least get the tower textured out a little bit and have something. And I then, like the uh, colors anyway. Yeah, I thought uh, a, a lot of the stuff we've done is very deserty, so I wanted to get right. kind of a mossy, mm -hmm. rocky yeah. look going. But very rough. I will uh, attempt to texture that out. I also uh, earlier in the week did a thing on stars and such, and was playing around with that, and did a little tutorial outside of the stuff that I'm recording for concept art. So that was pretty much my week. I haven't done the recording for the planets yet, but, but they're pretty easy. It's a lot of simple painting. <laughs> did you do something for making stars? I did. Uh, that yeah, that, that is up on the daily drop. Yeah, cool. How to do stars and nebula, and then I'll do another one that shows how to create planets and stuff like that. I did look cool. at this and realize that uh, with uh, my original art education being many, many years ago, that I really lean towards uh, that kind of digital look artwork had when they first started doing digital, which was right around when I went to school. Clean digital? Yeah, yeah, yeah. very uh, 3D looking, but almost too clean. So I've decided that's something I've got to work on. And I mean, if that's the style you want to do, it's great, but 
Yeah, the, the, actually, the the planets it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, uh, Futurama. No way. It, it reminded me a lot of, uh, and I, I'm probably dating myself. I don't even know if you guys will know the magazine, but it's a magazine called Heavy Metal. I'm aware of it. Yeah, they they did a lot of. Uh, that kind of digital painting look that was very specular and very clean and and I don't know I, I don't know why over the last year I didn't look at the stuff I do and even notice that but it hit me today it's like I need to work on being more painterly it's not a bad thing anyway I mean no I mean if if somebody wanted that style hey I'm your guy <laughs> but but I do definitely need to uh, expand expand my abilities there. There's also a cool trick in Illustrator where you can create a map of a planet and just map it around a sphere and then you can just drop that right into Photoshop and rescale it and rotate it around and stuff. It's kind of cool. That's very cool. Mean, I, I've never really messed with Illustrator. You mean like 3D uh, Photoshop? Uh, no, like you can use Illustrator, you can create 3D objects, like basic 3D objects real easily and map stuff on them faster than you can in like mm -hmm. 3ds Max or something. So if you want to make like a simple, like real, slightly more realistic looking planet, you can just paint the surface of a planet, map it onto the sphere, and then edit it in Photoshop so it looks more realistic. Uh, when oh, you say edit, edit in Photoshop, are you talking about... Create like, like layer masks to add grid. No, not in 3D. No, not, like you drop it as a 2D object, okay. you'd have to yeah. manipulate it in Illustrator. But is right. is the 3D in Illustrator easier than Photoshop? The 3D and the th basic 3D effects in Illustrator are just creating basic 3D shapes that you can like tack stuff onto, basically, like adding a really simple texture to something. But you can create them like really, really quickly, so it's easier than. Because I because like, I find tax. Photoshop's 3D to be kind of a bear. Oh yeah, it's it's awful. Like it won't, <laughs> I'm never gonna touch it till they improve it. Yeah, it's. I, when they came out with that, I thought, oh, this is great. We'll be able to like paint textures on, and no, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. It makes me feel better about not having it. It's expensive. I was gonna say, I'm sitting here thinking they have 3D. <laughs> it does, but it's... it works. It's just not working usably well basically like yeah. it's Photoshop's already such like a heavy like it uses your CPU so heavily that when you start adding 3D into it and it's already that inefficient it just bogs everything down yeah and it's I don't know the workflow is just how weird maybe just because I'm used to regular 3D but but I yeah, spend enough I time just, working uh... with it that I just don't yeah you, it doesn't function the way you think it would it's not even close to intuitive because the brushes don't always track around the shapes and all kinds of stupid stuff like that. Indeed. Well, I'll have to check into Illustrator if that's an easier workflow than that. Nick, it's nice to have you uh, with uh, working oh, a mic that works well. It's the same mic. It's just plugged into my oh. desktop and <laughs> breaking into my laptop. <laughs> Well, on that note, and since we've got you talking, I am going to go ahead and uh, find you on here, Nick. And we'll take a look at what you did. All right. Fair enough. Should be coming to you. Um. Oh, Nick. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So that's what I got worked on earlier this week was the inside of that building, sort of looking up through it with all the plants growing down. Nice. Oh yeah, I saw that pop on a drop box. It's a very nice silhouette. I like that. Nice yeah, so atmospheric dis uh, distortion. Is that what it's called? At atmospheric uh, depth. depth. At yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. So I was going to get some other stuff done, but like I said, like I got a little bit sick this weekend, and then, yeah, all my freelancing stuff got behind because of that, so I didn't have much more time to work on it. But it's really good. Uh, what are the lights? I figured they'd just be glowing spheres. Um, it, it would probably get darker the further down you went, just with that one skylight, so you'd have to have some source of, source of light. 
but I figure standing in the middle, it just didn't work compositionally to put lights on the bottom, and so I just took him out. <laughs> what what is this a what's the point of the tower? Is this some what where that's they like live? The or? Of, yeah, that's like where they live. That's where they build their cities. Basically, is they have these. It was big things outside, but I figured, you know, if you have this big structure that's easy to build, why wouldn't you build something cool in the middle, too, where you could walk around and talk to people and see all kinds of cool stuff on the inside as well. And, it, it, and fun it, to it, run it around looks, in in a game. Yeah, exactly. It looks neat, but what, the, it, I, I'm not sure how, like, practical it is. Like, I mean, like, it seems like they're not really utilizing... Um, every um, level of the building with the big middle chunked out for uh, to have a lot place. of a lot of our buildings are that way honestly like if you go to any like big hotel or something you have this big open area in the middle and that's so there's something cool to see basically I mean it, it's an aesthetic choice and if you can yeah. do it why wouldn't you if you can do it easily why wouldn't you do it so if you can build big and you can build big really cool really easily why wouldn't you I, I guess if there's a if there's enough space around it, you don't really feel like you need to. Yeah. Stay. So the idea is like each one would have like multiple rooms, and I figured this would be sort of maybe bottom of the middle or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was gonna do some other ones and sort of work out where it would be a little bit better and show you like different views. Sure. And... Just to kind of open things up and maybe um, add a, um, a yeah. light from the top. And, yeah. yeah. Basically. So like one of the other ones I was gonna do. I'll pull up Photoshop here and do a really rough sketch. And aside from aesthetics, I mean, you could argue, uh, like, if they ride dragons to get around, maybe you do want the middle open. Or if they use uh, stone technology to levitate themselves around. Yeah, that's you, true. You may want some like vertical open space, yeah. Uh, that that's actually a cool that would be a cool visual thing it's like uh, just these blocks instead of uh, instead of like elevator things just these blocks they kind of yeah on. levitate up and they stand on right. it'd be very neat yeah but I'll, I'll do some sketches of the other stuff during class and I'll show it to you guys later how about that because sure. I don't know how to make my screen switch to my tablet <laughs> <laughs> yeah we gotta nail it on that uh, actually, uh, in your little pullout thing, up in the upper left, there should be a it says "Show my screen," and you should be able to do a pull down. Uh, but I da, da, da. don't know how that will work with your laptop. Oh, screen up. of monitor too. You see on the other screen now? Uh, not yet. Nothing switched over. There we yep. go. Photoshop. Yep. Yeah, there we go. So, actually, gonna. Ignore that layer. Ah, that's opening things in the other window. I hate it when it does that. Yeah, I get caught with that recording a lot. I'm like, where's my... Th oh, it's in the other window. i got to drag it over. I look like a buffoon now. Okay, so the idea with this other one was... that I was going to draw another view basically looking forward through this area. So you're going to have, like, the roof there, floor sort of there -ish. I really need to organize my brushes. I, I've been working on uh, really reducing mine. Is the, can you, can you make uh, your brushes have flow settings? Yeah, you can. Cool. Because because uh, I've been having to go back and forth with the flow and thing. You know, it's, it seems uh, ridiculously uh, inefficient. Yeah, I mean, you can change your flow on the fly up at the top there, but you can go into yeah. your brush settings and fiddle around with them and save it out as an entirely different brush if you want. Yeah, see, that's why I need I need to make some 
brushes and, and get a little more organized for time considerations. So I, yeah, funny. looking and fiddling with brushes can really waste an astounding amount of time. Right, but just just going back float, it's like okay, I want to you know because I have to put I have to do it for uh, uh, both the brush and the eraser, you know, so I have to put the flow down to that, and then uh, when I want my flow to be 100% again, I have to put it back up on both of them. <laughs> See, I need to. I've seen people organize it by like what the brushes do, and that's what I really need to do. I think. Yeah. Come back up capacity. Yeah, it's nice to have. This is my environmental section. This is my painterly brushes. It's also probably wise to only open up the one, uh, the sets that you're going to be using, and not just have everything. Yeah, that, I need to go through and all my different sets and grab the individual brushes I use on each one and make like a twenty brush. These are the brushes I use. I love watching Photoshop at like 10 frames a second. <laughs> it's, it's like a surprise. It is. It's like nothing, nothing, bam. I apologize if I lose you guys for a bit. I'm in the process of replacing my mouse. <laughs> okay. The scroll wheel died a horrible death, and I cannot stand not having a scroll wheel. Is that Lance? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Forget is that Richard, I think? Yep. Hey. All right. There, we're getting there. All right. Don't forget. <laughs> so, so where is uh, uh, the flow and the brushes? It's uh, this, this slider right up there on the top. No, no, I know it's up there, but how do you... How do you like save it to the brushes? Uh, I think you need to do it in the brushes menu where you can alter everything, like over there. Yeah, like, but where in here? I'm looking at. Uh, I don't know if you can directly do flow. You you'd no. have to create a new brush and then you have to tweak stuff basically. Like you have to create a new brush every time you want to save it out, just about or save over. I don't remember. Oh, so, okay. So if you save a brush and you have like say the flow at eight, it will it will default at 8 for that brush? Yeah, I think so. Um, okay. That's how you do it. Anyway, uh, ba -da -ba -da, what do I want to do? Anyway, I'm just going to get through the end of this. So you have like the trees and like the columns and the sides of the building there. And... You can look for it in Trumper, I think. Sorry. What was that? I believe the flow settings are in transfer. In yeah, the... yeah. You can do right. uh, well. You can do your flow and opacity jitter in transfer, which will have some effect on it. And then you can choose whether to control that by pen pressure or fade yeah. or nothing. Oh yeah, nice. Well, it's okay. So, flow, flow of randomness, the flow jitter is just the same as if you go up to the top and change it. Uh, kind of. I it's don't mostly think it's defining the the way you uh, the the brush use it. I don't know how to explain it. It, it, think of it this way: the flow up at the top is a very is a very resolute figure. If if you set that to seventy percent, it will always go at seventy percent. Mm -hmm. If you go into the brush settings and do like flow jitter, the amount that you do is like a value range. 
Like if you just pull up a hard brush and pull the flow jitter way up, you can see you get almost a kind of jittery look to it. Uh -huh. So fiddling between the opacity and the flow jitter, you can you can affect it somewhat. It's not going to be as much as the actual flow up at the yeah. top. So I probably am going to have to keep messing with the flow up there and not just making brushes that can work for it. Yeah, the only way to really do it quick is, uh, depending on what kind of tablet you use, you could hotkey the flow to, like if you use uh, an Intuos, you could hotkey it to yeah. to uh, your wheel, so you could just spin your thumb to bring it up and down. And... What is uh, what is that flow under in the keyboard shortcuts? That's like a fine question, because I have never had to look for it. I really never use flow all that much. Like ridiculous. You, uh, the the hotkey is basically the the number keys with shift pressed uh, instead of changing oh, the opacity. Oh, okay, which... that's right. That okay. Thanks. Sweet. Yeah, I've I, I never used the the radio uh, radio window, uh, but uh, now I uh, I've made myself set a lot of high keys for it, and uh, it's working pretty well. Getting better at using it. You know what I'm talking about, Steve? Uh, I'm sorry, I was looking through high keys. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on. Uh, you you've been setting up what? With my um Wacom the in to this that what what is it what is it called? Radio? Oh the radio menu? Yeah. Uh like I never used that before, but this this time um uh I've been using that. I've been setting that up for things like even actions. Which I never bothered to make before, so I'm like, because it's really it's really hard for me to use my keyboard and that. But uh, yeah, so. my my desk is not conducive to having the two next to each other, so I feel you there. Well, and, and I've got the the large one, so it makes it so it's it's just not that good for uh, keyboard. But yeah. Yeah, the actual radio menu, it's mostly I only just use that for zooming and brushes, but, but I've hotkeyed some of my buttons for... Yeah, I've, I've made some action things like uh, for um, uh, new layer, uh, multiply layer, merge down, that kind of thing, so yeah. I can, uh, uh, and other things, but uh, yeah, so it's, but I'm doing that all through the radio. Uh, menu. Ah, cool. Yeah, I've got my uh, I've got my pen set for right clicking, so I can merge down and do everything from that. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was going for. Is you've got the big area at the bottom where you can like walk around with the trees, and you got the big like cool light source coming in, sort of with the sort of with the big light ray from the skylight in the middle. So it'll draw your eye up, you'll like look up there, you'll be like, man, this is really cool, and then you'll forget about it because you're going to go buy the next cool sword or something. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and how far, that there's a good amount of depth back behind those pillars and stuff? Before oh, well, back behind those uh, rear pillars are like where the homes or shops yeah. and all that are, right? Right. This is the, the bottom part of the tower, right? Yeah, yeah. Because if the wall was like right up close there, it would just be kind of a walkway. <laughs> yeah, like like the uh, I, I didn't get the scale right, and I needed to spend a lot of more time no, in the no, background. But no, no, that's no, just I, to give you an idea. 
Yeah. Right. Get it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I like that whole tower idea. I think there could be a lot yeah. of a lot of fun with that in a game. I like anything in a yeah. game that causes verticality. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's what I was thinking. You want to see the cool little planet yeah. trick too? You can actually. Um, what I was thinking was the the light. Uh, you can use the uh, mirrors or crystals reflecting light from the sky. Uh, the, the hole, the top, I don't know, the sky, uh, what's the name? Or you could have like the bottom be like one big fiber optic cable that carries light to different places too, something like that. You know, like you know, the what, light? what I was, I was thinking more of uh, like um, old buildings, uh, you have a, really old buildings, you have a, a hole from which the, the light will come up uh, will come in and then mirrors, or in this case, you could even put crystals reflecting the light. Right, that was, that's it what it will be a lot well. more more diffuse because uh, due to the the height of the tower, uh, other than noon, you wouldn't have this this uh, uh, right strong light. So you can always have that uh, a strong light coming through. But it's a really it's cool got, idea. I it, like your tower. It's kind of like the reverse um, uh, of the old, uh, uh, oh, what should we call it, um, lighthouse thing with the mirrors, like the the fire. Well, that the, the, they th thought like it's like the ancient Greek one, where the, or I don't know if it's Greek. I, but, I was uh, thinking the old Egyptians ones where they'd reflect light off copper. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. It, 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 it go all the way up to to the top. So it's it start like, you know, whether whether it be a small fire or something something at the bottom that the, the light would magnify and go all the way up and Yeah, so you'd have uh, the cool light source coming out of the building at night and the cool light source in the middle during the day. Yeah. This mm -hmm. this could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Well well done sir. Nice uh, insta sketch. <laughs> If you want to see the illustrator trick, I've got that sure. kind of done on the other screen. Yeah. Yeah. But only half of it. Yeah, only like half of it. <laughs> I don't know. My little toolbar <laughs> ran away. There we go. Maybe. But yeah, so you just make a... Actually, it ended up being a half circle, depending on where you rotate it from. Then you go up to Effect, 3D, Revolve, and it brings this other thing up in my other window. And uh, then you just make a sphere. And then you go to the Appearance panel here. You click on that thing. You do Map Art. If I can find the right spot for it. And the hard part is figuring out which side is which on these things sometimes. But you just put like a planet sketch or something on there, and you can just drag it over, and then suddenly you have a planet. Because it actually. Oh, that's pretty the cool. Shape to fit on the sphere. Yeah. It's like texturing something in 3ds Max. So you basically just draw the like a map of the planet, you end up on the sphere pretty quick in like 30 seconds and then import it back into Photoshop. Huh. What program is this again? It's Illustrator. So if you're huh. paying for the Adobe Creative Cloud, you'll get that with Photoshop. And 30 other things I haven't looked at yet. Yeah, pretty much. About the only ones I've ever used are After Effects and like InDesign. Yeah, I've used After Effects and Photoshop, and that's about it. Oh, uh, that's kind of weird. That's, about that's, that's an awesome fire. siren noise. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's very cool, man. So, yeah, I've, I've, I've made, like, plans for videos and stuff doing that, so it's a pretty quick and easy trick for that. 
Like it's it's actually even faster in After Effects if you do a video where you just create a sphere and map. It's basically the same process where you create a circle, tell it to rotate it like 360 degrees to make the sphere, and then you dump something on top of it and it maps it out like an actual planet. Huh. Well, you go, Adobe Guru. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that. I'm not very good with After Effects. It's just one of the things of the tricks I picked up when working on a video for work. Very cool. Oh, those are those are some nifty tricks. I like that. Alrighty, uh, Wolf, you said you had something, yes? Yeah. Sure. Uh, let's see. Find my panel here. All right, coming to you, buddy. And I know Sergio had a few pieces, so we will do him last. Hello. Gotcha. All right. You can see? I can see. Nice. Thanks. So, uh... That's awesome. Thanks. So I, I decided to try uh, um, a heavier armor. Now, I don't, I, I wouldn't, I don't really think this is, he this is kind of like medium since uh, the other one was light and you know and even though uh, you know on that scale which which uh, on some on some things that the other one could have been called uh, medium I guess but uh, the scale I think this is medium and it'd be uh, larger yeah uh, I, I would see their heavy armor being more like a mechy yeah <laughs> yeah, some more. something you climb into more than you put on. Well, I I would I, I would think that was more heavier, uh, like hev you know heavy and then extreme heavy, <laughs> you know some kind of. Well, not like a full blown mech, but right. but but not pull it over like a turtleneck either. Yeah, but yeah, I um, could I could see this being more medium. Right, because I mean I can see I I I think. It, the next step would be a little more bulky, less maneuverable. I, I kind of think uh, a, a little bit kind of like uh, the bomb diffuse thing, except not that um, not that uh, difficult to maneuver in. Yeah, I, I could see the heavy being something like mild robotic assistance. Well, you can see like servo motors or like pneumatic pistons or something next to the joints kind of thing. Yeah, something where it's it's heavy enough that the suit's going to help you maneuver. Right, yeah. This, yeah, I see that. That's why I'm saying it's not, it, you know, like these will all have uh... Hello? Wolf, you there? Yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, there you yeah. are. Now I can. You were gone for a minute there. Oh, I was talking. Uh, what was the last thing you heard me say? Uh, you started, to, right after the uh, servos and that, you started to say something and it cut out immediately. Uh, I don't know what you're saying, but uh, I... Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I see that... Um, yeah, the bigger suits will still have um, the things in them to to help uh, move them. You know, so just kind of similar to uh, like how, how the exoskeleton thing. You know, have some kind of exoskeleton. Yeah, I, uh, I, I can see this as medium because the armor yeah. is clearly heavier, but the joints yeah. are still uncovered, and I would see heavy yeah. as being like the joints would yeah. be integrated. Yeah, I, I actually did. Yeah, but the thing, the thing is, I was actually picturing this as a, I, I didn't. I was gonna try and draw little lines to show that this, this was actually. I was actually thinking of this as as some something more uh, hard, you know. But I didn't, I'm not sure exactly how to draw that to where to make sense where the joints can can move without crushing in on each other. But uh, I, I would. Uh, um... I, I could see it being something that offers sort of like some form of limited protection, but without it being a hard, rigid structure. Well, I already I already have that for uh, 
let's see. Um, I already have that for the, the original. Um, the lighter armor. Like this one, you know, it's like I already had. That's what that's what this stuff is. It's uh, a little bit, you know, it's kind of like uh, uh, some com combination of, uh, of uh, Kevlar, uh, Kevlar leather and chainmail <laughs> kind of kind of thing. This is my imagination. Yeah. Um, so th so um, then. Uh, like it, it's 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 one of those things. Like it's a, it's a it's a reality of our biological makeup. We need the ability to move at the joints in order to do anything. So inherently, there will be less protection in that area, but it has to be flexible to allow for that movement. Well, well I mean, me medieval, um, you know, so the medieval knights when they'd have like real, you know, they have like these gear things and stuff. So it's it's all this was all protected. That wasn't they. Exposed. They also weren't very good off of horseback. Like they ran into all kinds of trouble when they fell off their horse. You know, you know, it. I mean, I've I've seen things uh, like on the History Channel and stuff where it's it's not it it, um, it was easier to maneuver than we had given them credit. But yeah. You know, it, it of course it depends on how heavy. You know, they did get some real heavy ones, but anyway. Um, well, and it's also, it's also one of those things that if you become too reliant on technology, it becomes a liability. So, if it's one of those things where it's like some heavy mechanical implement that helps you move, if that ever fails, you're screwed. And I can't picture a military that would back something like that. Well, I think. I think like that kind of uh, goes. I guess with the heavier ones, I would say that um, that uh, you could probably um, have some uh, sort of escape hatch or something. Yeah, that you yeah, escape, back escape, escape uh, you know, uh, like un, un, undo it and come out. And you'd be wearing like the light armor thing underneath. Well, even today uh, they're working on that stuff, and it's got like triple redundant systems. Right. So if you have a failure, it just automatically yeah. goes down a couple systems, however much it needs it, to. I mean, I mean it, it is going to happen because it's like you know, if if you're the only side who doesn't have that, you're going to be at an extreme disadvantage. But, but yeah, I think there 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 would always be a way to get out. Um, yeah. So, uh, what about what about the color schemes? See, I, I wanted I wanted to do something a little bit different. I was kind of getting a little bored of those, but these are still kind of desert. Um, yeah, I like the uh, I like the middle one the best actually. If if the red had a little more specularity to it, then I think I'd really be jonesing on it. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I, I, I had to kind of rush the lighting. It kind of had to rush the whole thing. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, no worries. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you just in my head, yeah. that's how I see it, the the red being a little more painted looking, I guess. Well, I think, I think part of, like, I mean, originally I was going for these two, and actually I made it just by making a mistake with the color I found this. And, uh, and uh, I go, oh, that's different. Uh, I, I think part of it, part of maybe why you're liking this one is because the the difference in the values is. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I do like the heavier expresses. value difference. Yeah, because it's like, I think, you know, I was leaning towards this one a lot. Uh, I mean, I also like this one. But, uh, the, like, I don't know if this one makes quite as much sense but it does look cool Here, here's one thing I did just so you can you can see the values make it all black and white then you can just see the yeah the you have more, the a lot more contrast in the in the one in the middle right but and also um, I had more contrast a little bit more contrast than the other ones until I did before I did the lighting because the lighting kind of mm blends it so it's it's not as easy to see oh this thing to that thing but uh, um, but you I mean you can you can see the different things still so I mean it's like each one's good enough but anyway 
And I will also admit that I might want to see shiny or red because I'm thinking of Iron Man. That just occurred to me. <laughs> so that might just be my bad. Yeah. No, I mean, I could definitely uh, do that. Uh, because I'm, I, was, I was thinking of it all as shiny. I think, uh, that, yeah. Well, but, uh, if you do really what? write it up, then you can give me a hard time because I gave Derek a really hard time uh, when we were doing a a freelance piece and I had to drop color and the armor he had drawn was so Iron Man inspired that I just completely colored it as Iron Man. <laughs> <him> off, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, the... Um... The design, you know, I kind of had certain images in, in my mind, but I, a lot of it just kind of happens as as you, as I go through it, because I I do a little something and then I go, oh, what if I add this to it, or, you know, like 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 these things, you know, I, um, but uh, I, mean, I I think it looks neat. I um, I. Uh, I I'm never sure. Like it's always hard. Like. Did did I just completely like the the images that I got in my head? Are they my imagination, or am I remembering other things? And those are you know, it's like I never know. Like I might be ripping something that'll be off. But I, as far as I know, that'll go on forever, Wolf. I'm sorry. Right. It's, I but, still do that. I look around for images. But, right. Did I steal this somewhere? But I definitely um, didn't. That definitely didn't mean to. If I did, but I think I think. I think it, it it's you get a, a little less likely to do that the more different things you do you know like you know I have this and then I have this thing and you know it's like all the, the the when you have a lot of different details it's you're a lot less likely to to be exactly like something else but everything's going to be a little bit similar too so um some other things you can do that because it's it's a real habit from what I see with artists to do everything very symmetrically. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, like, if you took uh, on the heavy collar part or on that center chest kind of diamond shape, if you offset those to oh, one here? side, yeah, if you, uh, like, offset that a little bit to one side, it radically uh -huh. changes the way it looks from anything else. And it doesn't have to be big changes, just a couple pieces uh -huh. here or there. But so many people draw and model symmetrically, and especially modeling, because it's easy. You only have to do one half and then mirror it over, and it's perfect. Yeah, something to consider. So, yeah, when you're playing with stuff, think about, well, what if I just take this one piece here and put it a couple inches over to the left or right? Yeah. I, I originally didn't have this uh, as red. I had it as um, something you know a lot more like um, what I, I, I had the designs were a lot more like the other one but uh, a little bit different but they were all they were all very this the I mean uh, kind of the same color you know different shades of very similar color um, but you know so it kind of started uh, uh, boring me and so I um, I I clicked, um, you know, I, I cha overlaid uh, the color, and uh, I got I got red, and it just it, I actually got one that was a little bit darker. I I, cha I made this a little bit lighter just so there because because originally the the contrast for the, the black and white was exactly the same as some other um, thing I did. I think like here or whatever, but. Uh, uh, but that was uh, like originally. Anyway, uh, but but it's like well, I, 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 it, it like was so striking because it was like so different that you know I didn't even like I hadn't planned on doing anything like that colorful and then it's it just like you know I squealed I was <laughs> delight I was just, <laughs> I, was just <laughs> I was so I was so happy I was like oh my god that that works and you know what? it kind of looks like this area I I, I guess it kind of it almost looks. Uh, now that's red, it almost looks uh, snake-like or something, like a cobra or something. You know, like but like it, it, it does have desert. kind of a cobra hood look to it. Like like uh, des uh, but.
but like uh, I mean, desert colors sometimes the soil can be red and you know. That's very good. I I like the changes to it to make it heavier. And and I like that uh, when I first saw it, I was like, well, it looks a little heavier. But then you showed the old ones, and I was like, oh no, yeah. that they they match well. But that is a lot heavier yeah. actually. Yeah, e even if this is still just like the same kind of Kevlar type thing, if you, um, uh, hey, which is, it? if you look at, uh, if you look at this, this one, it just, it gets, um, it thickens it. It's like it's another layer on top of that. So that, that also makes sense. So, I mean, it could, it could just be that. I don't, I don't. I'm yeah. fine with either way. But I like yeah, it. this this looks much thinner. So it didn't it didn't originally look thin, but now it, compared to this bulky guy. Yeah, I I like it between those two. That's well done. So uh um on a side note, uh Nick, that quick painting you did, you didn't just delete that, did you? No, I'm doing a better version of it. It's sitting in my other screen right now. Um, the one you originally did, could you put that in Dropbox for me? Sure. I I did not make a mistake in which screen I was recording or anything like that and need to edit your stuff into the video later. No, I didn't do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, does Is this everybody's favorite? In the middle? I'm liking it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like the heavier contrast. Yep. Okay. Uh, what would be the second, just out of curiosity? Hmm. I will say the first one. Yeah, I was going to go with the first one, too. Yeah. That's what I thought. This is the one that I thought. Um, I thought I was just going to have these two, and I happy accident got that one. Yeah, after you did the lighting, the first one's darker, but really it's got more contrast, too. I think that's why I like those two the most. Yeah. And if not contrast in lighting, then just contrast in color. Right. Yeah, nicely done. Thanks. Yeah, I saved it's the. Oh, sorry. I was so gonna tell Steve I saved it out as a Photoshop oh, document, okay. so it's gonna take a little while to upload. Oh, okay. Yeah, just so it's on later. I don't even usually get to editing these till the next day, but the file's called "Steve doesn't make mistakes." <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I I originally had uh, I originally wanted to get a few different designs. But uh, I quickly realized I only had, was going to have time for one. But at least I got some different colors, so it kind of kind of makes you think I came up with three different de designs. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you which, have uh, you have which coherent. Which program are you using? You using Photoshop? Yeah, I'm using Photoshop. Um, what? No, I was going to say because it depends on the program, but uh, don't. Uh, the, the the way to work faster is don't try to do a clean line until yeah. the very end uh -huh. because um, it's another thing uh, at, at least it happens to me uh, you end up tiring yourself and putting uh, and yeah the line and your mind is just uh, after doing one or two you're you're going to have to do another thing entirely. Right. I don't know if I'm explaining myself. No, I, I, I understand. You, you, yeah, you, you put just... that much energy in, and by the time you go, oh, I can't do another one. But yeah, if you did, you a, look if you did a few rough sketches at, before, you know, then you go, well, I already have this rough sketch, so I can, uh, I, you know, I could neaten this up, this one too. But, but like once you've neaten one up, you like, you don't want to go um, start from scratch. Yeah, even copying to a side and starting changing th uh, things in the very same design. Oh, yeah, right. 
Well, very much like the uh, the first week Sergio was here and the uh, quick characters he did. You know, those very, very, very rough sketches, very black and white with just a little color thrown in. It's what? it's easy to do that and go, well, all right, you guys like this one? I'll I'll work that one out right. to completion without wanting to blow my own head off. Right. That's 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 what I was thinking. I I really want to um, try and uh, experiment with that style of uh, of drawing things out without without having a a line at the end. You know, it's just the lines are uh, for the beginning. Just uh, hold, you know how to hold your character, and then you paint it in, and then you you know keep painting in more and more. Yep. Back uh, back to Derek's layers. silhouette class. Right. right. But uh, but I uh, um, I haven't I haven't really spent time. You know I, I haven't I haven't done that to to uh, completion really. So I haven't really experimented with that. I think I'll be able to. I've watched <clears throat> a number of videos on it and stuff. But uh, but yeah, I think that would be. <clears throat> Because line line is difficult, and especially on the uh, Wacom tablet, it's it's difficult for me. And especially w once I start doing trying to do um, variations where uh, I'm pressing to uh, to have thicker lines, that makes my lines more squiggly. It's just, yeah, uh, it's hard. I, to, I, yeah. Uh, it's hard. I, I even sorry. <laughs> go, go ahead, go ahead. I, I was just say it's it's the the adjustment. It's actually it's actually a little bit more difficult to go from th because sometimes you want to get you start at thick thin line and go thicker and then go thin, but um, it's all difficult. But going going from thicker to thin, I, I I find that you know because you would you adjust to how much pressure you need to put like your your stability and once once you um, Start let uh, letting up on that; it starts slipping, and so that's very difficult. Yeah, what I was going to say, uh, coming from traditional media, and uh, I feel the the tablet like is drawing with a <laughs> with a pencil on a wet marble. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the lines in Photoshop I find really hard to control. I try to. Uh, go to other programs when I want to refine a, a drawing in lines, but... What programs do you use? Manga Studio, um, yeah. Illustrator, they, they correct. Uh, right. Uh, I really need yeah, to get you, you can smooth. Yeah, you can smooth lines in those. Yeah. Um, right. al yeah. Although, That's rather right. than shelling out that much, I'll have to look it up and uh, make a post yeah. for you guys. I, I saw somebody just did a plug-in for Photoshop. Oh, yeah. yeah, I heard about that. that, but I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I, I looked at the site, and it looks pretty slick, I have to say. Z Zach did a, um, in the AP, ADP class. Uh, or ADP, yeah. Um, he, Advanced Digital Production, uh, he... He showed a technique where um, where he he zoom, zooms in for the lines and, and he he paints them like like this. But he I don't know if he turned down the flow or something. But he he you know like painted them <clears throat> so he could paint the, them thicker and, and stuff. But I mean it was it was as if he was doing. I mean since we zoomed in, it was big, you know, strokes kind of thing and. Uh, but so um, through that way, you can get it looking like real night, no no shakings and stuff. But uh, yeah, it looks like but of clean course line it takes work. longer. Yeah, it looks looks like really nice clean line work. The, my only problem with that is it um, is it just takes longer. And and yeah. you know I feel like I want to master lines, but. Uh. Uh, and, and even the guys that are really good, a uh, clean lines, first try are really a pain um but binding the undo key to your wacom tablet is a good idea <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, I used to have that now i have it in the in the what's we call it the radio window so it's like the first thing i click on that and undo it's it's pretty fast though Awesome. Well, awesome work, guys. Uh, we're at 9.09. Let's take five minutes, mostly because I have to take care of bodily functions.
and right. then we'll come back and we'll grab Sergio. All right. Yeah. All right. See you guys in five. Okay. Just wanted to double check with the powers that be, and make sure that was okay. And that would be Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we are back to recording, and we have hopped over to Sergio's screen. And let her rip, Sergio. Tell us all about it. I'm getting a Bantha yeah. feel. <laughs> <laughs> Sand people? I don't know. <laughs> no, the thing is, um, since I didn't have oh, I like anything, um, uh, how will I say, um, actually plan to do um I did this once um if my computer starts responding uh, this is there's just sketches but uh, this one is um rethinking the city because the other one killed me so <laughs> yeah I was I was trying to um redo it in, in a different different way completely Something from, from scrap, from scratch. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, what? What? Uh, what, what exactly? What area of the uh, city can, are we looking yeah, at? Yeah. Can you explain this? Uh, this will be uh, kind of the same area, but more attached to the ship. Like, for example, let me just all of this in the background. Uh, I should put a, a lighter value in there, but um, it will be actually the ship. And over here, um, sorry, I was planning to to put a gap and um, maybe divide it like like if it were a, like a second story. I don't I don't know how to explain this correctly. Uh, higher up. Multi, yeah, multi-level. Yeah. All right, yeah. Um, Lot, lots of welded chunks of metal and such. Yeah, a bit more rugged and, and all of that because the other one... Um, do, do, you mean, do you mean like kind of like, uh, uh, like buildings on a rooftop? <laughs> like structures on a rooftop? Kind of. Yeah. Kind of, you could say, yeah. Or is that are, are they are they built on the ship or are they? This is these ones I was thinking I was uh, thinking on the ship yeah. Oh okay so a little things that be on top. Yeah I'm not I, I'm not tying myself to the design of the ship I did. Um, mm -hmm. I'm changing that constantly. I don't I don't really think it's uh, anything definitive. So yeah. I like it though. I, I like a lot of the middle pieces with uh, like ship conduit welded in for other purposes, and I like I like a lot of the uh, the strong line work. Yeah, it's mostly uh, it's just how I start pretty much everything. And I like uh, if if you think of turning uh turning that up to more of a crow's view. You, mm. you could see kind of like the uh, test maps we had, you can see lots of areas to block lines of sight and and, you, and as a city you could have a good uh, MOBA type map. Yeah. You, you know, it's interesting that there's there's that thing that directly in the middle, it, it juts up. Um, I, yeah. Right, that thing that jets up, yeah, that jets up. Now there's something in the background, but I I was like kind of reading that as as it was almost like a propeller thing, <laughs> like. Oh, I got you with the line that goes across the top. Yeah, like I thought it was that was kind of interesting. Like a, it was kind of a, um, a kind of steampunk or something. <laughs> like, that, yeah. that's funny because I looked yeah, at it. I, I looked at it and saw still. <laughs> you saw what? A still, a distillery. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Other than this, I. 
Nice. I put uh, something's wrong here. Hello. Nice dynamic poses. Yeah, a few layers seems to be off. Are you using the cloud thing or is this just Photoshop 6? I mean, six. CS6. CS. Six. Yeah. 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 Uh, see, this is, for example, something of, of what I was saying before. If it gives me control, it will be. About lines quality? Yeah. Hang on. I don't know why it's not letting me do pretty much anything. It's ah, it's dying. because you because you insulted yeah. it with the amount of RAM that it has. It's mad at you now. <laughs> yeah. See, this is actually um, this was the the first sketch. Uh huh. Then I did a, a more refined one, and I took it. A, Outside Photoshop to do the lines. Ah, See, cool. uh, This is pretty yeah. much uh, the way to to clean them up for me because I I actually uh, un unless you have practice um, doing really fine lines uh, with Photoshop, it kind of uh, I don't know. I, I feel like it's. I don't have that much control over it. I, I find yeah, it, I find it nigh impossible. Yeah, it, I'm getting better at it, but it's still very difficult. But yeah, I, I started off with rough, and then I uh, I went straight to a nicer uh, layer, which wasn't as nice as it could could have been. But uh, I had time issues. But yeah, Photoshop's definitely better for painting than most other programs, but it's never right. near as good for line art. Yeah, as, Ma as manga. Studio, is that or, is that or the, Illustrator is that, or? Well, isn't Illustrator? Aren't you just using vector things or? Well, there's actual vector brushes that will behave like lines. So you can get really precise lines and then clean them up really quickly if you practice with it. I mean, you, you mean you can draw? You can yeah, you, you can draw use with like them a, and then adjust them. Yeah, you can draw with them, adjust them. You can cut off the ends that like overlap that you don't want to overlap. Yeah. All kinds of crazy cool stuff, really quickly. Um, it's, it's even got an auto smoothing function, doesn't it? Yeah, the auto smoothing yeah. function isn't the best. Like you can lose a lot of the definition in like the shape. You can really struggle with it. Yeah. What, what like, do you What do you like better, Manga Studio for lines or or Illustrator? I haven't. That depends on the project. What? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I'm just saying I haven't worked enough with Illustrator, but I, I do for like really. Precise stuff. Illustrator is definitely better, hmm. but if it yeah. if it needs to be done like more loosely and fast and still look good, I'd go with Manga Studio. Huh. Now, there's there's a a free app that's like Illustrator. Something it's like is it uh, it's Ink something? It's got Ink. Oh, in Inkscape. Inkscape. Yeah, Inkscape. Hmm. Anybody try that? I have not used it. I've just heard about it. So. Um, I, I have heard good things about it from a lot of yeah. people in the gaming community and stuff, but you often hear good things about stuff that's free, so because it's free. So. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I should I should check that out at some point. But yeah, um, yeah, I think it will do a lot of the, at least a lot of the things that Manga Studio will do. I mean, it's it's not going to be as in depth as Illustrator, but. But for just line art, you're not going to use 90% of what Illustrator can do anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, Sergio, can you pop back and uh, show the show the uh, layer that just had the finish lines on it? Sure. Because I, I, I to have painted in them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to dem. I mean, the line works mostly complete, but if you look, it isn't entirely. Mm -hmm. 
And, yeah, it's just, and, and it's, it's it, that's an important thing to note because your line work doesn't have to be complete. There's a lot of places where his value and his shading is implying a line in the finished product. And you think it's there right. when you see the whole thing, but it doesn't have right. to be. You, you really only need it to make some detail pop. Yeah. yeah, especially if you're planning to paint over it because you're going to get rid of it anyway. You yeah. don't really need to, right. to complete. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, but uh, the, the one, one good thing about completing the, the, uh, the contour lines is, is that you can uh, do a sl select around it and then inverse and then you can color. Um, in, inside there or use it as a mask See, for the color in. I find I don't do that real often anyway just because a lot of times you get some artifacts around the edge of the line. A lot of times yeah, I will that, paint behind something. the line and then erase to the line. Yeah, I, it, I would normally just create another layer on top because that's uh, this is something you you do mostly at the at the start when you're trying to block in the shapes and uh, after that yeah sure I left it there for contrast but if you take it off it's not a big deal because it's actually what I'm going to paint over all of this uh, I mean as a sketch sure it's useful but you won't be seeing this in the in the final, anyway. Right, but it, you don't do uh, you don't do mask with it. Nah. No. No, like uh, I I don't. Uh. Well, and, and, I mean, there's there is no this way is better than that way. It's just the workflow. Yeah, it's um, mostly how you like to work and how you uh, find it easier for you. It's. Um, yeah, I, Wolf, you're very layer intensive. Mm -hmm. you, you will do layers yeah, for I'm everything. Just... Whereas I, I will, if I start getting more than 10 layers, I start to freak out and just start collapsing stuff. Yeah, and I, and I, I tend to collapse. paint more like traditional painting. Well, the the thing is, uh, when, when I don't have a mask, then if I'm doing, uh, it's more of an issue for doing... Uh, uh, shading, lighting, uh, it's very easy to, to to have stuff that go out outside. Uh, when you um, don't want to, like yeah, so like you ra you think you've erased everything, and then you, and then you don't, and then it like it shows up if you change the background or something. And go, oh, that's gross, and, and then you have to deal with that. Yeah, and that all just comes down to what workflow do you like, and. Maybe. And if you're really going to change the background. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I lost sound for a second. Um, uh, if you're really, I mean, all the lighting and all of that, you will probably do after you have a background. Uh, I mean, you will be completing pretty much everything at the same time. So. In rare, uh, it's rare to have a character and one, uh, unless you're just defining the character. I mean, if I didn't have all of this, sure, I will be cleaning up all of the artifacts I get. But mm -hmm. if I'm going to paint uh, a, a composition, I, I wouldn't do that. I don't know. But maybe it's just me. I don't know. Right. Because well, you don't. It it depends on what you, you're doing, especially the more painterly like uh, uh, you, you work that those artifacts actually kind of help blend can, or can help blend the uh, the person in the scene you know yeah well I mean they give it character yeah, yeah it can give it, you know character you know depending so depending on what looks you're going for yeah uh, this one I did mostly because I didn't uh, I didn't uh, saw any uh, any graphic where you have an alithian standing next to a human. Yeah, that, so, I think the alithian probably are normally a, um, a bit taller, but 
Uh, that, that's that... uh, something I wanted to ask. To yeah. ask, um, proportion-wise, uh, if uh, how will you manage them? Yeah, I, I don't I, remember. I would say, I mean, not a lot, but a few inches taller and a little bit beefier, a little sturdier. For, it, well, I mean, it's yeah. like we're, we're about uh, average at a, about uh, uh, six foot. Yes, and uh, they they can be seven or eight, isn't it? I, I off the top of my head, I wanted yeah. to say we thought right around seven. I don't remember exactly, yeah. but that was what popped in my head was about seven feet tall. Hey, how um, much will that be in meters? Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, meters um, around one eighty for uh, humans is. Uh, I mean, two meters tall is the doorway. They're probably just under two meters tall then, because they'd be like a professional basketball player kind of height yeah. on the average. Uh, seven feet would be 2.13 meters. Yeah, I got 2.15 uh, about average. <clears throat> Hi, Joshua, by the way. Sorry. Oh, and, like, aren't, aren't meters that they're, like, a uh, little Sergio. over three <laughs> uh, feet? Something over three feet, that's... Uh, it's, uh, a little over two meters, like, 2.15 meters would be about the height of an Alethian. Okay, so I, I'll do it a, a little bit taller. Yeah, it, oh, it's, it's not like... much bigger, but a little. And proportionally, he's great. I, I, if he was a little wider, that would be fine. Yeah. But in terms of it, yeah. like his arms to his midsection is great. Well, I think maybe it would be like a head taller and then, and then, and then, like you said, a little bit wider. Hello? Yeah, I, I mean, like if you hit Control T and just stretched him a little both directions, he'd be about right. I think their legs were longer too. Well, it, it, we started out that way. Then we kind of, we kind of went to having their torso be a little longer. I don't. Okay. I, don't I, I. I mean, we could go either way on that, but uh, I don't know that we have a, you know a definitive answer. But that's as far as I know that. Our last. Uh, yeah, they, overall, they, they kinda, he's, he's proportioned pretty good. They, they kind of yeah. had a, a, another um, set of abs, kind of thing. A little bit wide and longer. Hey, hey, Sergio. Yep. Make a selection around the whole Alethian. Oh, you missing this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and just scale the whole thing up so it's a few inches taller. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> there, there, right about. There we go. That's, yeah, that's that's, good. that's that looks good. That's about yeah, that perfect in my eyes. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah. I have seen this too, but... And you burned him. His arm's on fire. <clears throat> yeah, mostly, uh, I was trying to contrast... Um, uh, the type of weaponry, uh, like more technology, and even if this is technology, it will look like magic, so... <clears throat> Uh, well, I mean, it, a, a bit of that. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is magic, but it's 
it's how how we can think about magic in a science like way. <laughs> it's explainable magic. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Any technology sufficiently advanced is indistinguishable from magic. It's just basically a different way of doing things. Yeah. Was that Arthur C. Clarke? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when did he join the class? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we wish. <laughs> Uh, this ones I did uh, when I, when my brain was uh, pretty much dead. I did these ones, uh, mostly nice. for some nice uh, silhouettes. Richard, I, yeah. I like, I like the middle second one up. That looks, uh, nope. There. Yeah. I like that the looks, bottom uh, left. This one. No, bottom left. No, left. Little, little left. My other left. Yeah. Uh, for the pistols, I like the first and the third one for top to bottom. Those are good. I like them. Yeah. And I like uh, and good. I like yeah, the first sniper rifle top left. And I like the first and second yeah. one in top left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not. Um, after I I started, I kind of started dividing, but there's not really a division. I mean, this could easily be uh, a heavy pistol. I don't know. Uh, just change a bit this, uh, the size of this, and you're done. And I, I didn't really define. Uh, well, I will do rifles here, shotguns here. Right. It's pretty much. Right. Yeah. Close. Yeah, that's nice silhouettes. They're all are. Mostly if you yeah. want to model some of that, I don't know. Right. Well, we're going to need a lot of different types of guns. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like eventually. If we have pistols and energy weapons, and then different qualities of each, depending on right. who manufactured them, there's a whole diverse collection of stuff by the end of it. Yeah, mostly. Uh, <coughs> what I will do to approach, uh, to do that a bit more approachable, is just model parts. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, right. I very much. Yeah, I agree. Much modular assembly, yeah, which is pretty much the same way I did this. Actually, I just yeah. copy this, erase some parts, added some others. <coughs> but yeah, <laughs> this one I did uh, in ink at first. It's a few really small sketches on the bus going to work. Um, and I was working them. And I have, I sh I tend to jump from one point to the other <laughs> without <laughs> really uh, thinking because, um, as I said before, I didn't have that much uh, opportunity to look at the documents. So I'm pretty much going on the air with this. <laughs> That's all right. I like to jump it around. We'll find creative things that way. Yeah. yeah, this, this for example, was, uh, I was thinking more, uh, I I believe I was watching uh, early videos um, about the comic. Yeah, that's what I was uh, thinking of when I saw it. Yeah, and it's just a light sketch. Uh, but... Oh, like yeah, the hive in the comic? Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah, like that, nice. yes. Yeah. Um, after that, let me see. This one show. Well, this one I didn't know. Um, I didn't really knew uh, which transports will they have if they have any. So I did this crap. Looks like mammoths. Yeah, <laughs> it's a mix. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the bulk made me think Bantha, and then the things on top made me think of the uh, elephants from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Mammoth elephants. But very cool. I like the head on them. It's very skull-like. Reminds me yeah, of a dragon the... head, actually. Yeah. Because I actually uh, started drawing... <laughs> I actually started drawing something else, and I continue with this. Uh, 
No, I like it. And yeah, you're that right. It is cool. it is kind of dragon reminiscent, which would fit the world. <coughs> yeah, that's why it looks. Um, since it's uh, just a basic sketch, that's why it looks kind of a, a kind of a skull, because you want to put these basics in in any creature you. Yeah, yeah. You, you want to define its anatomy. But I'm not sure I'd get very far away from it. I kind of like that. Yeah, you can just nice, nice. uh, do a, a really small body fat, and this will have, at least in the face. Well, and I didn't. Because I didn't look close before. Fun. I didn't even see the guys for scale on top. Nice. That was nice. <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay, I see it now. Yeah, this is actually just the same one copied over, but right. right. That's allowed. There's no cheating here. <laughs> Especially since it's a, it's just a sketch. Uh, this one you saw. Uh, it's the one I started last class, I believe. Yep. And these are the old ones I also show. So uh, I pretty much don't don't have. Since you gave me a pass, I did. I took it. Hey, you you did a lot of you did a lot of work for a pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, my job is actually uh, except for I have two. One is for a comic artist, but it's just cleaning pages. It's menial work. The other one, it has nothing to do with this. So my free time, I use it for this. Um, <laughs> it's what I like to do. There you go. <laughs> what I would like to live for, uh, live from. Uh, so yeah, we'll keep working to get you there. Uh, you're rolling your way. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't really know. Uh, if you could give me uh, a, a more specific task uh, for next class, I, I may uh, do that. Because uh, I, I, I am jumping a lot. And so, so if I say feet and hands on that ZBrush model? I will hate you, but I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> honest. That's good. Yeah, I like honest. And, and I'm willing to be hated, because that would really make me happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I don't think I got to see that ZBrush model. Oh, um... It's pretty much in the same state. The only thing that changed uh, changed was the the face. Let me just pull it up. Which was exactly what I was looking for. I was very pleased with the face. Uh. I can hear your no, I can hear computer. your ram growling at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, very nice. I like that. On my other computer, I was able to take your uh, your original model, Sergio, without the feet, and I was able to put some crude feet on there and animate it. But that's on my other computer, which I left at my other house. Oh, sad. Yeah. I know it, it looked good. It was it was mostly like human walking animation. I haven't had the chance to like get him to sit on his on his on the balls of his feet yet. It's a little bit more difficult than it looks, but uh, it is rigged and animated. Well, and the way we designed it is a little strange. I mean, he's kind of got his heel is like a toe halfway up his calf. Yeah, but, but yeah, it's a, but there's it's hard not to imagine. Yeah, but there's yeah, it's not like heavily bird. jointed though. So okay. yeah, I don't know. I, I honestly, I don't know exactly how that'll animate out yet. You could probably but, try to find like a high heel kind oh. of walk that might work out, and then just tweak it. Yeah, the, it, it's, yeah. it's it's yeah. it's the okay. same. There we go. It's, it's the exact same thing as uh, Nightcrawler in uh, X Men. Yeah, kind of, except the toes oh. located higher up. Sorry, I don't think I I watched that one. I'm looking it up. Well, it's very, it's very similar. That's to that, the uh, second night, second X Men movie. Okay. 
or you know. look for the look for the comic illustrations because it will show it. Better. Yeah, that'll show up. Yeah, better. right. But if you just want to watch them flip around and be really cool, then the movie's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I will save that to correct yeah. all of that. Um, let me see. Yeah, I like that head. It looked good. Oh, can you show the weapons again? I had uh, a thought for some kind of cutscene. Uh, so if you can imagine the Aletheans trying to uh, hold on to these weapons yes, and fire them, they, they wouldn't really be able to get their meat hooks around such a small trigger, and it'd be very difficult but, for them. But the Aletheans wouldn't be using these weapons. Well, we did talk about them. Uh, no, I mean, but like, if they if they picked it up, it'd be like they wouldn't know what to do with it. They would club it or throw it, <laughs> chuck it at them. We did. Yeah. We did originally <laughs> talk about them repurposing weapons, right. but I don't know that? where. Uh, oh man, that was way back. That was way back. I think that I think that was back with Zach was here. <laughs> No, yeah. it wasn't because I wasn't here when Zach oh, wow, was here. Yeah. Uh, I was. <laughs> yeah, it was it must have been in one of the some of the videos that aren't up. But no, it was it was one of the earlier discussions, but I don't think we ever really settled on a definite answer. No, we but... we had we had just talked about them like uh, integrating crystals into weapons and basically yeah. remolding them. Yeah. But yeah, they they would. Uh, I don't know. And I mean with their hands and feet and their size most of these weapons will look huge on the humans and they mm -hmm. look like you know nerf guns to an alethian well it could be a case where like maybe they just basically look at the humans implementation of the technology to go and create these types of weapons and until now they've never really had use for that kind of thing maybe they come up with their own sort of take on it using their technology and their understanding of their life forms that they emerge with. Yeah, I could definitely see a sort of hybrid. A, yeah, I could see an Alethean uh, uh, engineer, for lack of a better term, reverse engineering one to figure out how this tech works. And, I mean, t right. technically, they've been around longer than we are. Reverse engineering, it would be strange to them, but I don't think it would be hard. The, the thing, like, uh, as far as... Uh... Uh, you know why they would need to. I think, uh, our, our, our desire to not need to, but I think uh, a, a reason to consider is that uh, is that uh, the the power using using power that it, it kind of, it, it's uh, you know it has a mana cost. You know, and it like uh, it, de it depletes. It gets tired. And that kind of thing. So. Um, Having having something where you, as long as you have ammo, you can just keep reloading, um, is is something that could benefit them. Same reason that humans wear a knife when they go to a, you know, it, it's something that doesn't run out. Yeah, or yeah, at least something that, for all intents and purposes, it's a renewable form of energy for them, like. I kind of pictured them using the stabs in a similar fashion to the way we would use a rifle. It's just they don't have to shoulder it. They just, you know, swing the staff and throw a chunk of ice at you or whatever they're going to do. They're going to use. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, thinking like, that no. if they, like sorry, the sorry. massive, no, it's okay. Uh, like the massive fireballs, for example, that you know, arcing over kilometers. That's their effective equivalent of our mortars. That sort of thing. Yeah, mostly because uh, we were discussing that. Uh, um, making small parts for them will be uh, complicated, not impossible, but complicated. Yeah. And these things, yeah, usually because they don't have, have the. Yeah, if I were an Alethian, that thousand tiny parts put together would be fascinating to me. If I was one of their yeah. craftsmen, <laughs> I would tear apart everyone I could get my hands on. <laughs> yeah. Well, heck, even the tools alone to do that properly would just probably be mind blowing to them. It's like, what the heck do you mean that's used to build this? Well, yeah. And.
<laughs> and maybe understanding it more would uh, help them uh, in uh, defending against it or countering it, you know, like uh, uh, giving it a surge of energy to damage it, you know, understanding how it uh, its weak points is. Or... Yeah, I would want to know how it worked so I know how to stop it. Right. Or defend, at least defend against it. Oh, that's an interesting thought. If we stick with the idea that Danielle was that is she's primarily a mechanic, who better to teach them? True that. What about the Alethians capturing human mechanics and making them work for them? I suppose that could be an option for the for, for the more militant groups, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to get too far down the uh, slavery road. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, you could have some uh, very militant Alethians that don't mind bending people to their will. You know, just show me how this is done, and you can go home. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unlike humans, they actually keep their word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sergio, I love that you somehow got a face out of that. Yeah. <laughs> what, was that blind uh, luck? Well, uh, uh, I was just watching the video, and uh, this is one of the screens I took. Let me just. If my machine start, uh, stops uh, <laughs> screaming. Is it a laptop? Yeah. Uh, this is oh, yeah, actually you screenshot the second it. I. I I took yeah because um, I saw this. <laughs> I didn't even see on. that. I saw that. Oh wow! But this nice. actually ties with what you were uh, talking about in one of the last classes about uh, searching a form. Yep. In in stuff. So yeah, this one. You have <laughs> I'm horribly embarrassed. And, I didn't see that now. And the other one, <laughs> I took it earlier. You can see that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much. That looks kind of creepy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be playing with my cloud layers a lot more than now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to throw it there because uh, it actually ties up pretty well with what. You what you were saying, and I usually, let me see, what I do, uh, I don't know, I don't think I have the all the brushes here because they were on my other computer, the one that died, but this I actually make from the videos of the class, uh, I think Derek it's the name of the yep. person yep. that did them. Uh, one of the things I usually do is just um, play along with the settings. And you, well, without trumpet. Hang on. Yeah, this is dying. Well, the thing is, uh, you erase with the same brush and look for form into that. That's pretty much what I was saying. I don't know why this is coming this way. You're really making me feel old school that I do things that like stare at painted walls and carpet now to see form. No, I, I do that too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this was pretty much... Uh, I don't know. If you see you, you look at cloud and you see something, and it's pretty much the same thing. That is so obvious. It just, I can't believe I didn't see that. That's awesome. It's hilarious. <laughs> I saw that right away. Yeah. So so did I. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about what I was recording. Yeah, that's it. It stands out. Yeah, it, it, it 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 doesn't look like an accident. To me. 
<laughs> and yet it was. That's crazy. But yeah. <laughs> Well, this is pretty much all I did. Um, I don't know. Well, you can be proud of yourself. You got us to the two-hour mark. Oh, <laughs> great. You know, I think I can safely say that I kind of like what you do without a focus and direction. Yeah. You yeah. do a lot of little stuff, and it's stuff that we need to see. Well, it's, there's the old concept of uh, the mastermind principle, that if you put a few people in a room... Yeah and everybody just spits out whatever comes to mind, you'll get much further, much faster than even the most brilliant person on their own will get. And uh, a lot of yeah, a lot true. of the old industrial people like uh, Henry Ford and Firestone, they used to hold weekly meetings together and just sit around and just spout ideas. And that was a huge part of America's Industrial Revolution, was these seven or eight guys just feeding off each other's ideas. And it's it's it is a brilliant principle. It works beautifully. So, yeah. Well, I mean, whatever, whatever schmeck you throw together, bring it. Because <laughs> just like that cloud layer, you never know what someone else is going to see in it. I never, yeah, I never would have saw that. I was busy recording and never looked at it again, and I never would have saw that face. Well, it's still very much a rough work in progress, but I did finally get the hand mesh um, linked up to the rest of the character. Alrighty, do you want to show it? Uh, yeah, I've got a few stills rendered. Whenever, uh, <laughs> uh, whenever she goes finished. <laughs> I'm done. That one, yeah, I'm that had me giggling. Playing around. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't quite sure what to make of that, but I was giggling pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, let's grab Richard here quick. Thank you, Sergio, uh, for a past week. You have no idea how high my expectations are for a not past week now. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. That's a pretty good mesh. Okay, how do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. That's a pretty good mesh. Cool. All right, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm still still working on it. I'd like to get try and get some more detail into the top of the hand, at least as far as the high detail geometry goes, to help out with the normal maps and whatnot. It feels like the fingers are a little too slender, maybe, but. Um, then again, if it's a female character, overall the to... overall the fingers oh, aren't sorry. bad, but um, where they actually the where they actually meet the hand, uh, you yeah. should yeah. you that's, should close yeah is. you should close that gap. Okay, you can do that. Hey, if, if you hold up and your hand yeah. without spreading it out, it's it's a v, yeah it's they're a pretty v, close you know yeah. yeah. But if you do that, then that'll thicken the base, and they'll look just fine. Cool. All right. And, uh, yeah, i got to do some more work here on the actual palm of the hand. And I don't even know how the thumb was actually going to come together in the end, but this uh, this section here looks a little too sharp. It'll look a lot better with the wrinkles in. It, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it, I mean, it needs a little and, work, but... Dude, hands are hard. <laughs> yeah, I, I've learned that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 out of all anatomy, that's up there, if not the hardest thing to do well. Yeah, I've I've learned a lot of new swears in the process of doing that. <laughs> I, I think actually doing like a fully fleshed out foot is harder. Yeah, but feet? people don't look at the feet. Right. Like, so you can get away with a lot more. Feet. The, the problem with feet yeah. is that even when you get them correct, they look weird. <laughs> but so. but the good thing about feet is so many people right. have yeah. weird looking feet. Is if it's a little off, you can get away with it. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I'll definitely I'll close up the fingers and 
See, that goes the original model before I tried matching it to the photo reference was actually uh, the fingers were closer together. So I'll probably just go back to that since the the geometry changes at the base of the wrist. It wasn't that hard to do. So let me just go back to the original mesh and try it just with that, see how it goes. Cool. When you have this uh, this one ready, uh, you will send it to me for ZBrush? Uh, that is the plan, yep. Well, then uh, keep one model with the fingers actually this separated. Uh, just the fingers or? No, no, no with the, yeah, with the fingers. Uh, oh, yeah, because you can... Because you can fill that with ZBrush, right? Yeah, and it will be a lot harder if they're closer because ZBrush doesn't like when you have uh, creases to uh, two surfaces to uh, to close. That's true. I okay. never thought about that. Yeah, you might actually be better off with that. Yeah. So uh, if you want to uh, to make this model. Uh, Take it uh, further, further down the line to uh, do that, but be sure to to keep uh, at least a model of the hand for me. Okay. Now, as far as these are concerned, do you need the UV layouts beforehand, or do you generate those in ZBrush? The UVs usually I do them in Max after I did the high poly, so. Okay. Since I'm just sculpting it, it's not that relevant. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm basically going to be doing a. Um, yeah, it's a weird fresh, because. Sorry. I'll be doing like a fresh quad-based topology for the model once we get to the low poly game version. It's actually mm -hmm. not going to use the high poly mesh as a base. Um, no, of course. Uh, just because I've got more control over exactly where the quads go and. It'll be a lot easier than trying to fix this without distorting it. Yeah. So, yeah, the when I get the quad-based version done, then I'll I'll definitely set that up with the UVs that we can apply the ZBrush map to. Uh, I will say um, it will be um, better for time uh, if you want to. Uh, I I don't think I will take it will take much time for me to add detail. Um, it will be better if I add the detail, send that to you, and you correct then, because okay. um, mostly to keep the the volume because if you try to project it and it's it doesn't match up. Mm. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> no, I, I, I think I get what you mean, yeah. Because there have been a few times even just doing basic projections where things don't match and it throws the whole thing off. Yeah, your maps will show with red spots. Yeah. It's weird for me because I, I never did it this way. I usually do it the other way around. <laughs> uh, I I usually do the the, the high poly first, and I never successfully did a low poly model. But well, we'll get to play with some different workflows. Yeah, we'll that's find, true. We'll find yeah. out what works best for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Um, yeah. uh, Josh, is there anything uh, you need to get in before we actually shut down the recording? Uh, no, no, not not really. Right. Uh, other than the animation and some of the ship models that I made, and I don't really have anything to show besides that. We worked on the storyline quite a bit, but it was my birthday this week, so I took kind of a break. Oh, fair enough. Happy birthday. Cool. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Um, and, and the other stuff's on the other computer, right? Yeah. Well, oh, then you're set for next year. I, actually, I, have, I have one of the... Uh, ship models here on this computer. I can show that 
pretty quickly. I use Blender because I can't get a decent download for 3DS Max. So, Alrighty. yeah, it's 7 gigs is too much for me right now. Let me grab you, and we'll have a look. Nice. Oh, nice. Holy moly. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you guys would like it. It's uh, okay, that's kind of something I put together. Um, What'd you do this in? That's Blender. This is in oh, Blender. Blender. Yeah, it is Blender. Yeah. Wow. Oh, dude, that's cool. pretty BA. Yeah. Uh, nice. How many polys Thanks. are you? So I wasn't sure if you'd like it. Whew, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Um, I think it's going to be a lot. Probably. Yeah, I have uh, 117,000 vertices. Yeah. Yeah. It can be dropped down. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, this Excuse is the sort of thing, yeah, you could bake this easily down to a lower poly mesh. So, should we sing him happy birthday? No. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> You'd have to pay yeah, for that. Come on. You'd have to pay for that. All right, Richard, but. <laughs> yeah. You can do it, but you have to do it like you're impersonating right. Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, I don't think that. I think that's a little outside of my range. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can do it in your range. You just have to put the emphasis in. Yeah, you can't do it on the recording, though. <laughs> no, no, I would no, not be get... into yeah, that no, ever. No, thank you. You get sued for that song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, and I want to keep my ears. I don't want to pay a medical bill for that. Uh, sued the for the song. Ears. Yeah, exactly. It's like there's a certain base, you know, treatment for prisoners and all that kind of stuff, and subjecting you guys to that, and just, no. Even the race does not deserve that. Not to mention su subjecting himself to yeah. ridicule, ridicule by anyone else who watches the video. <laughs> I know what your real reasoning is. <laughs> can you uh, is <laughs> can you hide the wireframe? I can't. I can't remember how to do that. Actually, I've been messing around. I only work in wireframe because I prefer it. But yeah. Yeah, I, you I see everything much better. I love the design. Basically, I, I did like a couple hours worth of tutorials and uh, learned how to do Blender like three days ago. And Jeez. I've been just, <laughs> just pulling on shapes. Bite me, Josh. I was going to say, I don't think you <laughs> Well, I have a lot of experience with, uh, with other, especially 3DS Max. I like 3DS Max, but I just can't get it right now because in this country, I don't know what's going on, but the... The downloader for it's just not working. Hmm. It keeps uh, it keeps corrupting the download before I can get oh. past 100 megabytes. I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm pretty sure you can make arrangements to get a physical copy shipped to you from Autodesk. Uh, I haven't had to do it for a while, but I think the option is still available in the subscription center. I'm trying to find why. Yeah, uh, I know they'll do that for you. Uh, I'll just have to work on that. Yeah, but yeah, it's just, I'm glad you guys like this. But, but, yeah, but you're awesome. doing just fine in free Blender. I might add, so. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That? That's, yeah. Yeah. Well, well uh, once you I can't, it, I can't do organic shapes. Organic. And I also don't know how to do interiors. I don't know how to. I don't know how to make it animated or anything like you can. But yeah, that's basically what it looks like on the inside. Right. Well, uh, you wouldn't be moving the camera around and stuff. Yeah, you, you would you probably do a, a separate scene for the interior, yeah, but yeah, right. Uh, I I really like the design. The uh, mostly because I tend to <laughs> to do bulky things and seeing this yeah. in, in, in separate uh, object, almost separate objects. Uh, it's really great. It's something I, I really can't achieve that much, and I love it. If you can see this hallway, that's supposed to be about seven feet tall, that, that uh, hallway right there. So that gives you about a little bit of scale. Right. Sweet. OK. So that would yeah. be like sort of a Corvette type design then, or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. 
Yeah, the Corvette. Corvette, Corvette, Corvette is a guy. Yeah. Well, anything, anything that's like um, a fighter, I would, tr I would see that as like a one-person deal. You climb in the cockpit and you hop out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, interior structure like this, that's this would be an awesome little Corvette. Fly what around, small crew. Also, small I'm, up. I'm a little, little bit of a fan of asymmetrical designs, so you, you can see like, oops, shit. Yeah, like functional asymmetry, no problem. Eve asymmetry, okay. nah. -uh. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, just no. like that right. ship wouldn't even fly in a straight line. Kind of asymmetry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I like how the well, actually in space good. since there's no. Well, it, it has to do with the position yeah. of the engines. Where I look at the engines, and I'm just like, this right. thing should be spinning in circles and not going yeah. anywhere. Yeah, you, you, right. you're in space. Yeah. You don't have to worry about aerodynamics. But if it's a spaceship that's supposed to operate in atmosphere, you do. Like, and definitely, yep. center of thrust applies no matter where you are. So if you have like odd bits out, you need a thruster on them, and it needs to be scaled to like the mass, the apparent mass of that piece, basically. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Something, uh, like, I think... something like two guns on one side and one on the other, that's not a big deal. But it's... you know, if you had like some great big chunky sensor thing on one side, you'd need to have something there to compensate for the extra mass. Or just something on the other side of the engine to balance it out. It's got a, yeah. a aggressive forward stance. I the, love uh, it. The, the, as far as the shooting thing, though, if it's if it's shooting out projectiles and stuff, if, if it's just one cannon on the side, it, it's probably going to affect its, uh, you know, it's yeah. going to be pushed yeah. back. So it would affect it. Well, if, if there's also like a, 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 um, a force applied through the, the engine thrust at the at the same moment, then yeah. I mean like if counter. there's a yeah, yeah, a counter mo motion. That, yeah. Yeah. With computers you, inside handling all right. the Yeah. I mean I think we would be smart enough to figure that out. Right. Then. I mean if we can do a fly by wire now we can compensate for firing by fly by wire kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 Well yeah. and for the most part I pictured like anything that isn't handheld is pretty much at that point it would be energy based. So maybe not a beam type weapon. It right. would still be like a, you know, a pulse of energy tra traveling toward the target. But the idea would be that you're firing energy weapons, which not only minimizes your recoil, it eliminates the need to carry ammunition outside of like missiles and torpedoes. Man, I'm just you. You get a ten in design, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I've, I've I've always been a good architect and designer. It's just uh, I didn't really pursue it. So, uh, what do you think should be the texture of these things? I mean, are we going with steel or what? For I'm picturing like yeah, metallic type stuff. Yeah, something metallic. Okay. I was and are we going to use comp painted composites with changes changes in surface? How about example, like rusty uh, paint? I always like that look. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I, like, like it seems to me like like I said, we're dealing with Earth on its last legs here, so we're dealing with desperate people, relaxed safety requirements. You're gonna have ships that some of them will look pristine and others are gonna look worn right down. And I would think we'd be using more mm. composites in the future. I mean, because metals are a more limited resource yeah, than some of the ways you can make composite materials, so it'd be more like yeah, ultra advanced. And also, composites are like uh, comp composites are stronger. They're lighter. They require less resources. They're just exactly. difficult Which, to manufacture. I, but once I, they are manufactured, then they're beautiful. And that I also think, means you've got less uh, less fuel required to move you around. I think the whole thing yeah. will be made up of. Uh, 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 <laughs> what's what's the word for it? Um, microscopic uh, nano. Bots. All it's a nano ship, nanobot ship. Yeah, they're all collectively um, together. And then you get hit by like a solar flare, and they're all just oh. like, no, our circuits are fried. We're going someplace else. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That would, that would be bad. That would be very bad. Happen. Screw you guys. <laughs> yeah, screw you guys. We're going home. Yeah. I could see it being made in like a big, like. Uh, a 3D printer kind of thing, where you print out the composite yeah. materials in a 3D printer. <laughs> the, yeah, you, I, I suppose that could be possible if yeah. if you were able to, uh, like, yeah, that's, 
if you were able to just uh, pretty much laser holes inside of any material, it, it would t become a composite-like structure. Well, well that's, I, I, I will just say be, this. Oh, go ahead. I was thinking it'd be like an inkjet printer where you spray like two different things in a composite, and the chemicals will combine, and you'll get the hard surface with the th the thing, and you just design it so it would print the holes in the thing, basically. So you would have your entire ship, you just run wires, and be like basically gigantic Lego pieces or something where you just snap them together after you print them out. Yeah. I like it. Hey, uh, thank you. But uh, I would, uh, yeah, I would uh, definitely uh, say that uh, like a lot of roughed up painted surfaces that have seen wear and tear, any anywhere where you have thin, small joints like a lot of those, I would definitely texture as some kind of composite material. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if it's something yeah, a lot of these joints. Into, if it's something that can go into atmosphere, odds are we're going to have some score, scoring and stuff like that along the bottom where it comes in. And the, like the leading edges of everything will probably be a little bit chipped up too, just because you're probably going to hit like little micrometeorites and stuff as you're flying around every now and then. Yeah. So you're thinking like right around in this area there should be some scratches from entering the atmosphere as well as uh, right around these parts here? Yeah, like those are basically like a... intakes. Yeah, probably around the fronts of the engine and like the edges of the wing and maybe like the very front of the ship a little bit. Yeah, where it'd catch debris, right. debris hitting it in Atmo and 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 you know, just because might like a bird. and just because where looks more realistic and cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> looks lit. Makes it feel like a western in space. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Like Star Trek looked beautiful. Firefly looked convincing. Yeah. Unlike Star Trek, what, where everything's what, all pretty. Well, <laughs> which, which they explained, but still, yeah, without the explanation, it's like, wow, that's a really perfectly pristine ship, and and it, yeah, it and it, like, it, it, you'd expect it takes to see you on like the, the model floor of like a dealership. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, and it takes it's you soft. out of the. It's the only time you ever see it like that. Well, yeah, yeah, it's like every well, it, room its own dishwasher, so you just turn it on and it cleans itself. <laughs> <laughs> The, the it's like, older... you know, they're talking. They're talking about hull breaches. Isn't this like the next time you see the ship? Not a scratch. And then you got Battlestar that it yep. kept every single hole in it right through to the end, and she just got looking worse and worse and worse. And yeah. Right. The the the, the more used it is, uh, the the older it is, and that's it, that's a good example. Battlestar Galactica is. Uh, uh, like it, the ship didn't start out. It was it was it was about to be a retired ship, and they, they had make done enough maintenance on it that it looked it still looked great. But then you go out in the you know frontier, you're just you know going and going. You don't have time for all that. Then it, you know things start accumulating, and I think that's uh, what uh, a lot of these ships would would be like, especially um, ones that aren't. Uh, I don't know the, the lesser ones. <laughs> yeah, Less like military. One. Yeah, I can, I can see military, military keeping yeah. their stuff, you know, in pristine order as much as they can. But yeah, definitely civilians. You, yeah, right. You That's can like, only like afford the care you can afford. So right, like Firefox. It's like that. They they were just you know they couldn't afford to buy a new ship or they didn't have a military base where they could go and get it all fixed. So they just had to keep it up on the seat of their pants. They had to you know come up with uh, different ways of making the engine run and you know just so it, it gets warm yeah and I'm totally calling you out for saying Firefox because it's my favorite show yeah ever. Firefox <laughs> Firefox. <laughs> Firefox yes you did I was just I had to mute the microphone so that you didn't hear the snicker <laughs> Oh, so we're all in agreement. We like uh, we like Star Wars better than Star Trek, right? Uh, no, we are not in agreement on that. No, I like them both. Uh, like yeah. I, things. I like them both equally, and I don't shun one or the other. Well, well, it, well. That's interesting right. because it, it, both of those um, apply. You, you have to to Star Wars. You have the original ones where everything was lived in and worn and stuff, and then you have. Uh, uh, the prequels where everything was just clean, clean, clean. 
And Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> right. And Jar Jar Binks. Please don't yeah. mention that name Nobody likes again. <laughs> See, I like the old Star Wars and the new Star Treks kind of thing. I yeah. don't remember what it was. Okay. It, there was a, a, a post, like, blaming everything on Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> everything that happens in the Star Wars <laughs> universe is fault. fault of Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> because... He gave the he did the audition, and we lost you. Uh, I think we've yeah, got a leg spike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One one thing I wanted to add is kind of a, a little bit off topic, but uh, uh, someone someone was talking about how my uh, about the, the heaviness of the armor, and, and what well, I was thinking that. Um, uh, it's probably uh, um, the metal would be lighter and stronger than metals that we use now. It's kind of it's kind of like uh, I have an old uh, desktop um, computer uh, case, Jesse, and uh, and my my current one, which I believe is aluminum, and that's so much lighter. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and there's it's, some truth to that. You know, it's yeah. strong. You know, it's strong. So I mean, I think I think it's like e even though it it, it it may look if like if you think of a lot of the metals today that it would be using, it may look too heavy. But I think it'd be lighter than what it looks like. Future tech. Future tech. There, you got it in. Good man. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and we will accept it. We will accept yeah. future tech. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, God, I'm just blown away by that. I can't wait to see how that transfers to a low poly. Yeah, I can't wait yeah. to see it flying around, causing all kinds of trouble. <laughs> I've actually never baked a mesh before, so you might have to show me something. Uh, if it's a, if it's in Blender, I might not. <laughs> uh, yeah, if it's in Blender, you're on your own, dude. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Well, first, you like good. I can oven. actually I can export it to FBX, and then we'll. We'll do it in 3ds Max. Yeah, that'll work. I, I have no idea that. either. Especially now that, thank okay. God, Blender has FBX export. Export. Yeah. Jeez. Jeez. I can't believe how long they export went without that. Firefox. I know. <laughs> I was just going to say, is that brought to you by that uh, Firefox? <laughs> <laughs> thing I've been hearing so much about. There you go. See, that's I mocked okay. him and I paid. Wolf. That's all. That's Wolf. If I spew coke on my monitors, you're paying for them. <laughs> Actually, I don't think that'll hurt your monitors, but yeah. Uh, I'll still charge them for it. Yeah. <laughs> 70 cents for cleaning materials. There you go. Yep. <laughs> Just that, that, not going to lie, that was close. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we have passed the two hour right. of actual recording time. That ship is fantastic, oh, wow. sir. <laughs> Jaja Binks and Star Fox. Oh God. I agree. I say he I'm won. I'm gonna have session. to make a model of Jar Jar Binks and put him in the cockpit. <laughs> I loved him in Star Fox. It's great, great movie. Prequels. I hate that character so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mere words cannot describe. Well, the sheer amount of animosity and hatred I have for that character. Well, and I will date myself. I grew up with the original run of this original Star Trek series. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, I had you know a decade and a half of Star Trek in me before the first Star Wars came out. Yes, it is. Hazel, I got a question for you. What's that? Um. What do you think about the idea that this thing needs to enter atmosphere? It basically jettisons that rear section, and then it's primarily just the the wings and stuff going into the atmosphere. Except so, for rather than jettisoning it, it would probably dock it at a storage facility somewhere off, um, like in planetary orbit. He just leave it there yeah. and then grab it when he gets back. Yeah, well, I mean, it could even be something that, you know, if he's in a stable orbit and then things go sideways down on the surface and he needs to go right now, he can oh, just yeah, leave he can just, and then come back. Drop him. Yeah. But, Steve, what so did I, you say? He can find both of the pieces. <laughs> I can like that. <laughs> did you say you have a, had yeah. a decade be before it or after it? Before. Oh. 
Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said. Yeah, me too. I'm like baloney, but yeah. I was gonna let yeah. it go. <laughs> Someone like that. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. I t I thought you meant you had you had a certain amount of time to enjoy the first uh, once before you they were spoiled by the prequels. So. No, I I had a, I had I had time to watch Star Trek the original series. I was there when it got canceled. <laughs> yeah. Before it went to syndication. You were watching the, the original Battlestar Galactica and much later. Yeah. <laughs> Was that was that before Star Wars or it was during? Uh, I think it was it after. Was right, right after. Before? Yeah. yeah. Probably. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. It was just like, oh, space is big. Let's come out with a show, Battle Stars. <laughs> See, I I watched the first few Battle Stars. But then, much like Jar Jar Binks, the little kid in it with that little robot dog yeah. just ticked me off, and I quit watching it. Even as a kid, I was like, "This is ridiculous," and I quit well, watching. Well, see, I, I loved that because I was I was young enough when I had, when I'd seen that. Probably in, I you know, saw it in syndication, but that I uh, uh, I I, it, I just loved that. Just just like little kids love Jar Jar Binks. You know, you, <laughs> if you're if you're young enough. That appeals to. You. Yeah, I suppose I was. Uh, I was. A, I was, I was in high school by then, and that wasn't flying yeah. with me. Right. No. I'll just throw this out there. My uh, nine-year-old cousin, my nine-year-old nephew, can't stand Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> good for him. Yeah. yeah. I was I'm like, proud yes, of him. good, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Brought a tear to my eye. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been so proud. <laughs> All right, guys, we got to shut down the recording here because this is going to take even my new computer yeah. quite a while to render all in one take. Plus, I have to fix the mistake I didn't make earlier. Right. <laughs> so, I will see you guys next week. Uh, what's everybody want to work on? Sound off. Tell me. I do it. Permitting, I'm going to work on that uh, character model and try and get that head and the face finished. And I will do some detail work on the hands as well. Excellent. I'll either do uh, try another um, suit, or I might work on helmets, or I might do nothing. <laughs> oh, well. I'll bet. I bet you could do some practicing with silhouettes and yeah. shading. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that tone. <laughs> All righty, uh, Sergio. What do you got going on this week? All right. Well, um, probably I'll just keep jumping around, but <laughs> I will try to I will try to do the fit since you asked me before. Awesome! <laughs> and I already hate it. <laughs> I was gonna say we should volunteer to do the hands and the feet so you can hate everybody. <laughs> well, being hated is part of my job. That's all. <laughs> All right, uh, and uh, Josh, you have a bunch of material to get to me. Yeah, I have um, I have Alethean animations that I need to work on this week. Uh, probably perfect them with a better model also, if somebody has one with actual feet that I can use. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the other one, it's just, they're just ch chopped off, and I pretty much just put uh, round blocks on there. <laughs> See, Sergio, now you, okay. now you get to hate Josh, too. Yeah. <laughs> Some feet would be amazing. Um, un until then, I'm just going to use the... Uh, I'm, I'm not going to animate the toes or anything, because he doesn't have toes. <laughs> Works for me. So I'm just going to make it look like he's stepping on his, on his, on his toes. And uh, try and put some some paint on these models here, and... Work out the storyline a little bit more. Uh, Richard and I had some good ideas tonight that we talked about. So cool. Yeah. Yep. And uh, one of the things that I'm going to start working on here in the next little while is I have a program called Substance Designer. Oh, you have Substance and Designer. I do. I do. You suck. And it's awesome. <laughs> 
so I'm going to see about uh, not so much with the characters yet, but I'm going to test the workflow once I've got the game ready version of the pistol and the UV layouts and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to, when I've got the projection map set up for the normal maps and whatnot, I'm going to take all of that into Substance Designer to see if I can create um, a material with like control for wear and tear, scratches, rust, all that kind of stuff and apply it to that, not only to the mesh, but I'm going to take the material and put it into Unity to see how it works as far as moving the sliders around and adjusting all the parameters for it. So if it works, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and if it works for that, we could even extend the workflow to allow for something like texturing that ship where you could have a texture map that controls how much um, scorch marks you have from atmospheric entry and stuff like that. Yeah, Substance Designer is very cool. What's the other one they just came out with? Uh, painter something? Yeah, other. Substance Painter. Uh, something yeah, like that. I've got that one, too. That looks really, really sweet. Yeah, I, I haven't done much with it because I really need to upgrade the RAM on this machine before it's going to be functional with that program, but... What I did see, yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, if anybody hasn't seen that, you you can take your textures on your model and you can do things like shoot particles at it and it will retexture it based on that. It's it's really smooth. Yeah, so you could like have it, you know, you could set up a set of particles effectively to mimic a flamethrower or a blowtorch and you could score up certain parts of the model and it will interact with that surface the way if you would expect a flame to do so. Yeah, or if you had something that was sitting outside, you could set up particles like rain and get long-term rain wear and tear on it. It's, what, it's awesome. Once, once they get those two really worked out, not a beta, a lot of the texturing workflows we're used to are going to become ancient history, I think. Yeah. They, what you is know, it called? Sub uh, substance Designer and Substance Painter. Uh, it's by a company called uh... Future Tech. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but thank you for for the algorithmic. I was just thank you for forcing it out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like I, I lucked out right around Christmas. They had a huge promotion on it for actually the commercial rated software for Substance Designer. So I got it for like a fraction of the price that I was going to have to pay at the Unite conference. Nice. And I was like, I logged into Steam during the last 40 minutes of that sale. I'm like, okay, no contest, mine. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had those, but I spent all my money on this yeah. computer and now I can't buy any software. So. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we are going to kill the recording. I am looking forward to seeing stuff next week. I'm looking forward to an email from you, Josh, and then I will get with Jason somewhere in the next seven days. And awesome. That'd be great. We'll rock I would like to show them all of the work that we've done on the timeline and uh, some of the upcoming possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. Can't, can't, can't really move forward without his, uh, his say-so. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's why I've kept it out of the recordings for now. But absolutely. All right, shoot me that stuff and I will look forward to seeing everybody else's work next week. You guys are rocking. Good hunting, everyone. All right. All right, have a good night, guys. Bye. Right. Good night to you guys. It's morning here. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Thank you, man. I said good night. <laughs> <laughs>